name is Shelly Schrey. I am a Tai Chi instructor at the Jewish Community Center in St. Louis and um, doing this class with you through AARP. And um, I've been teaching for over 20 years. I've been practicing Tai Chi for over 30. I've had students from the ages of like 13 to 94 was my oldest student. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, there's help for us all. <laughs> um, yeah, Sandy, I guess you have some things that you want to say at the. Um, I do. Uh, before we begin, before we formally begin. All righty. Well, good morning and welcome to AARP Missouri's fitness series, Moving It. I'm Sandy, a volunteer with AARP to help you kick off our new fitness programming. Moving It has three programs to help you keep fit. Our program today, Tai Chi, will be delivered by Jewish Community Center instructors on Thursdays at 10.30 a.m. Our second program is Forever Fit, which has been developed and will be delivered by the Jewish Community Center of St. Louis. This program will take place every Monday at 10.30 a.m. Our final program, Moving It with Val, will be on Wednesdays at 6 o'clock p.m., and, and on AARP Missouri Facebook and the YouTube channel. The fitness series is open to anyone, anywhere, so tell your friends and family. Moving It is a part of our overall program, The Good Life with AARP, which provides you with tips, ideals, and experiences to help you live your best life. I encourage you to check out our other programs by going to aarp.org forward slash Missouri. Okay, Shelley, I think we are ready to start. <laughs> it looks that question. way. Yeah, so um, some of you may or may, ha may not have had um, done any Tai Chi before. So I'll just give you a little bit of information on the form that um, that I teach, that I do for this for this group and actually for most of my groups during the, um, during the week. So um, this uh, form or practice that we're doing, it's called Tai Chi Fundamentals. It was created by Trisha Yu, and um, it was modified uh, from the Yang style form. So the teaching lineage actually goes back to the Yang family. Uh, it's a very traditional teaching lineage. Um, and so um, Trisha, you and I uh, practiced or learned the same form, the Yang style short form, and this form is modified from it. Um, what I like about this form uh, is that while the movements are modified uh, so that it's really accessible to people with all kinds of um, limitations, things they can and cannot do, uh, it's not watered down at all. The benefits are the same. Um, we're working on the same basic principles of movement. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the form so you know what we're working on, especially for those of you who may have done a little Tai Chi. Things are, for, are uh, looking familiar. I just want to position the computer and myself. Sorry, my house is in a bit of disarray. Um, we had floors painted and wall, uh, floors sanded and walls painted, and um, we're not back together yet. So um, I'll just do the first third of the form, which is what we'll be working on um, today. So you can see the movements are slow and even. What we focus on with new beginners is just learning the basic choreography and how to move. This form and teaching tradition focuses a lot on postural alignment <clears throat> and really emphasizing the basic health benefits of Tai Chi. Actually, I'll add a little more just so you can see what's down the road. <laughs> Um, so that first part is what we're working on today. I, right now I'm doing the middle part, which is a little more complex, okay? But um, the teaching goes from simple to more complex, just like the form does. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you the whole thing, why not? <laughs> 
And there are some single legged postures that you can do with um, one foot or not. There are lots, there's lots of room for modification, for additional modifications and change. Just, and I'll turn around so you can see the end part, just so that um, really to make it accessible for everyone. When I was learning this form, when I was, um, went for my training, most of the people, um, there were a few Tai Chi practitioners, but almost everyone was a physical therapist or an occupational therapist. And uh, this form has been approved by the VA. So we're doing it there too. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. The um, first we'll do some warm ups, which are called the basic movement patterns. And they'll introduce you and allow me to emphasize the real basics of Tai Chi, because that's what we're after here. Um, so the five basic principles, there are four principles of movement and five principles overall. So for movement, learning how to relax the mind and body, that's the hardest, <laughs> the most challenging. Um, keeping the body upright. So that means we're, we're gonna work on not leaning left and right, forward and back. We all, come, we all have all kinds of tension through here, neck and shoulders. So um, we're, try, we're working on trying to stay relaxed so the body can move the way it was intended to. You know, we can't think clearly when the mind is stressed and bothered, the body can't move efficiently if it's stressed and stress could translate as an injury. So relax, keeping the body upright, separating the weight and we'll go through all these, we'll demonstrate them. Moving from the center, waist is the commander. Those are the four parts that are, have to do with movement. And the fifth principle has to do with once we're in the form and moving, um, having a straight wrist, keeping the wrist open and straight. Um, Professor Chen Man Ching, who, cr who created the Yang style short form was also a Chinese physician. And he felt it was very important not to have any stress or tension in, in the in any, any joints. So that's why, you know, we don't do this. I mean, you know, we don't want to create any tension here in the hands are open. Okay, so to start, um, we'll start with our feet hip width distance. So um, look at your feet there. For the average adult, I found over the years, you know, six to eight inches is like the average space. You want the toes pointed straight ahead, okay? And the idea is that the center of the foot is lined up with the center of the hip joint where the bone is, okay? So that gives us a nice stable base. And you just wanna relax the feet. We're just going to settle the breath. Placing the hands on the lower abdomen helps relax this whole area so there's no tension in the stomach. And allow your head to feel buoyant, like the head is suspended from the crown. I'm going to adjust the screen a little bit. And you want your feet to be relaxed, like they're melted into the floor. Imagine a connection to the earth itself. So we're just going to take a few moments to relax the breath here. In the Tai Chi fundamentals, we talk about the three heavies. That would be the knees, the tailbone, and the elbows. So allow those three places to feel heavy. And the three lights are the top of the head, the eyes, and the hands. And just pay attention to your breathing, to your rhythm of breathing. Relax the belly. Relax the back. And we want to try to maintain this slow, even rhythm of breathing throughout the warm ups. Um, warm ups take about 10 minutes. And then let your arms feel heavy by your sides like heavy ropes. And slowly begin swinging the arms from the shoulder. I'm going to turn sideways so that I can illustrate a little better what I mean. So the elbows can bend, but what we don't want, we want to avoid this because um, we want the movement to feel the whole arm. So the arm is full and heavy. And um, sometimes I, uh, the image of a swing on a swing set could help, the shoulders like a hinge. So just getting the blood going, you know, um, many of us have had joint replacements and had injuries. So if you have any um, limited range of motion in the shoulders, this can be a very small movement, just a little bit, okay? You don't want to exaggerate the movement. Okay, so now let the arms come to rest by the sides. The next movement is called crane takes flight. It involves the arms and the hands. We're just gonna do the, um, the feet first. So the palms um, just face each other and the arms still maintain that heavy feeling. Um, what we're doing is we're just bending the knees and hips slightly and then coming back up to the neutral position 
without locking the knees. Okay, remember, we don't want to lock the joints. And actually, let's go ahead and put one hand on the lower abdomen. Let's really isolate the foot movement so it looks like this. That will tell you that as you bend your knees and hips, you'll be able to feel if you have a tendency to lean forward or back. If putting your hands here is uncomfortable, then don't do it. Okay, so the goal here is to keep the shoulders above the hips and just bend the knees and hips slightly so that you get a little fold in the hip joint here. Um, just like you do when you're going to sit down. Only when we sit down, we typically stick the butt out to grab the chair. But here, we want to imagine that tailbone has weight and it's just dropping down. Okay, now what the arms do is the palms face each other. We start out bending the knees and hips. And we breathe in as the wrists rise. The elbows feel heavy. Remember, it's called crane takes flight. Wrists no higher than the shoulders. And exhale as you bend the knees and hips. And the knees stay pointed straight ahead and both feet are flat on the floor, breathing in and out. Inhale and exhale. Breathing in and out, we'll do one more. So the feet are relaxed, you want the feeling that the feet are melded into the floor, connected into the earth. So as you bend the knees and hips, I want you to stay down there and the palms face the floor for this next exercise, which is called bare rooting. And again, I'm gonna get a little closer. We want, um, imagine that your fingertips are resting on a surface. See how my elbows lined up with my torso? I don't have my arm extended because that creates tension in the shoulder, brings the shoulder forward. So the elbow feels heavy, the fingertips light. And for this one, we start out the same way. You know, we've bent the knees and hips, so we're a little lower. Remember, none of these exercises are range of motion. They're all coordination. So pay attention to the bottoms of your feet. And as you bend the knees and hips, slowly sink most of the weight, all of the weight if you can manage it, into one foot. Now you want to relax the hip joint of the weighted leg. And then slowly sink the weight into the center of the bottom of the other foot. So we want this idea that we're connected to the earth. The center of the bottom of the foot, the Chinese call the bubbling well. And imagine that that center of the bottom of the foot, about where the arch is, is open. And as you shift the weight, your, your energy or your weight is descending into the earth. That keeps the center of gravity here. Sorry about the cats. <laughs> Keeping the body upright. Okay, very good. Now come back to um, neutral, come back to center. This next posture is called stable and open while gathering the stars. The stable and open portion refers to the um, feet. So for this one, and I wanna make sure you can see my feet. Again, always this middle stance, knees not locked. So you don't want the elbows to hang. You want the feeling that the whole um, arms are maybe floating on water, okay? So from, we bend the knees and hips and shift the weight. You can see the progression. Now we're working on waist as the commander, the waist turn. So um, if you're doing the mirror image, then the weight's on the right leg. You're gonna to turn to the left, turn your hips, turn from here, and you're gonna pivot on the left foot just a little bit and then come back. So the feet are um, hip width distance and then we shift the weight again, relax the lower back and turning the waist out and back. This is what the feet do. We shift the weight and turn the waist, hopefully while staying relaxed, keeping the body upright. Okay, come back to the middle and what the arms do is we inhale as the arms open, not too far. Exhale as we close back to gathering the stars. I'm gonna turn sideways again so you can see my arms are open. I don't extend my hands to my body. They're not back here because that creates tension into the diagonal. Okay, so we just inhale and exhale. Now we're gonna put it together, okay? I'll do a few facing you and then I'll do a few um, with my back to you. So. Bending the knees and hips, sinking into the right foot. Breathing in as the arms open. Breathing out as they close. And shift the weight and turn the waist. So over time, we're gonna be working on the waist turn, um, causing the arms and the feet to change. So inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. And I'm gonna turn around and Shift the weight first, and then turn the waist, breathing in 
and breathing out. Shift the weight down into the right foot, inhale and exhale. So I'm keeping my body upright. I'm moving with my waist as the commander. I'm separating the weight because I'm shifting first before I move. And I'm staying relaxed. My breath, same slow, even rhythm of breathing is when we started. Inhale and exhale. Okay, come back to center. There's just one exercise left in the warm ups in the basic movement patterns part one, and then we'll do our form work. Um, so I'm okay to, um, if people have questions or, or comments, um, there is a chat available um, and we'll take a break. We'll take a few breaks, but um, so just uh, remember that if something that I'm asking you to do bothers you or causes pain, um, we can make modifications or you might not be doing it exactly right. So you can type a question in the chat. Um, if you have a question, again, I don't mind being interrupted. You can press the space bar while you speak and then release the space bar on the keyboard. That way you don't have to unmute and remute. Okay, so we're gonna do the last um, warm up exercise in this uh, basic movement pattern part one. And this last one is called um, stable and open, which refers to the legs. Um, but that was the last one. So this last one's called bear walking, sorry, bear walking. Um, and we're gonna change the position of the feet. So, so far our feet have been in this hip width position, right? With the toes pointed straight ahead. So for this next um, foot position, it's called a 70-30 posture. And so the rear foot's gonna end up on the diagonal and then we're gonna have a front foot. Okay, and when we're in the actual posture, most of the weight, 70% of the weight is gonna be on that front leg. We're just gonna practice shifting the weight. So we wanna maintain, so if you imagine a railroad track or a ladder on the ground, okay, we're gonna maintain the hip width distance. So when we step forward, what we don't wanna do is narrow the space between the feet because then you're not stable, right? Tai Chi is really good for balance and stability. Okay, so. And, and throughout all these exercises, and even in the form, what we're doing with the feet is more important than the arms, okay? So if it's too confusing, focus on the feet. All right, uh, bear walking. So feet are parallel, hip width distance. I'm going to do the mirror image. So we start just like we did through the, um, through the exercises. We bend the knees and hips, shift into the right foot. Turn the waist to the left, turning uh, the left toes out just a little bit. Like if we're on the face of the clock and this is, um, 12, then you're just turning out to 11, all right? All the way down into that foot, into the left foot. Try to get your hips facing front. Because the other thing is that if you turn the toes out too much, you won't be able to face front without putting um, pressure on the knee, tension on the knee. So just enough so that it's on an angle and you can get the hips facing front. Now all the weights on that left leg. You can look at your foot if you need to, step straight out like that right foot's on a balanced beam. And this is what we mean by separating the weight. We wanna take an empty step. So don't put, don't commit yet. Don't put too much weight in it yet. Now, again, we're just gonna do the feet. I like one hand in front, one hand in back to remind me to keep the body upright. We're just gonna bend the knees and hips. Bend the knees and hips, sink most of the weight into the center of the right foot. Now the heel of your rear foot should remain flat on the floor. Both feet should feel like they're fully adhering. And now bend the knees and hips. You've got to release the front hip joint. Both feet stay flat on the floor. And we're just shifting the weight. Again, I'm going to turn sideways. You can see how I'm able to keep my body upright by having, um, by moving the hips. The hip joints make small adjustments. So if my body's upright, it's because both hip joints are bent. If I shift into the front foot by pushing off the rear foot, then I'm going to be leaning, okay? And if I don't bend the front hip joint, I'm going to be leaning back. So we don't want that. With the upper body, head easing upward, feet firmly rooted to the earth. So the Tai Chi tradition is as a martial art, which does not depend on strength. It depends on sensitivity and timing. Learning to be stable so that you can respond to change. Okay, we're just gonna change feet and then I'll add the arms. So I'm um, shifting into the rear foot, bringing the front foot back, straight back. So we're back to that neutral position. If you didn't land quite right, just go ahead and adjust your feet and we'll do the other side. So bending the knees and hips, shifting into the left foot, turn to the right, turn the right toes out just a little bit, 
facing front, all the way into that right foot so you can take the empty step. And now so the arms are relaxed down by the sides, the bend the knees and hips sink into the front foot, the left foot, and the wrists rise, shoulder high, shoulder width. Elbows feel heavy. And then sinking into the rear foot. And breathing in as the wrists rise. And breathing out as you release. So if you imagine as you inhale, the lungs expand, you could maybe think about the arms expanding, you know, like the lungs, breathing in and out. I'm gonna turn sideways again, so you can see how I'm able to, with just bending both hips, I'm able to keep my body upright, Wrists no higher than the shoulders. Head is floating up and the feet are relaxed, firmly rooted to the earth. And we'll just do two more and take a short break. In and out. This is the last one. Breathing in and breathing out all the way in the right foot. Bring the left foot straight back. We're back to this basic stance. Okay, so let's take a short break, walk around a little bit. Um, looks like there might be a question in the chat. Let me see what's there. Get a little sip of water if you like. Shoes or barefoot, um, it's your comfort, whatever you're comfortable with. For me, it depends on what surface I'm on. Because I'm working on a rug um, with a kind of a medium pile, um, I'm better off um, barefoot. If I was on a wood floor, I'd have, my, I'd have shoes on. Um, so here are my little, Tai Chi, or they're called Kung Fu shoes. And any shoe that has a relatively smooth, flat bottom, so that because we're pivoting, right? Remember we pivot on the heel, so you wanna be able to move smoothly. So like I say, whatever whatever works. I had someone, we used to work, one place we worked on, a, um, we had a linoleum floor and this one fellow, he would wear his slippers and then put a pair of socks over the slippers and that worked and then, on the floor. So like I say, whatever works. Okay, so here's another one um, about how, the, um, how to access the recorded session. So I'm gonna let um, Sandy answer that either via chat or at the end about how people can access um, the recorded sessions. Okay, so now we're gonna do the form work. I just wanna check the time. Okay, good, we've got plenty of time. All right, so I tend to talk a lot. <laughs> So uh, remember, we're focusing on the feet. Don't worry about the arms. There's, you know, moving the arms and the feet simultaneously. So just a, a, a word. One of the other things that I really love about uh, this form is that these basic movement patterns that we've done, everything you need to know about doing Tai Chi and benefiting from Tai Chi is in the basic movement patterns that we've done. It just gets a little boring to do the same thing over and over again. But for people whose mobility is severely limited, um, that might be all that they can manage and you still get all the benefits. Um, also, um, a number of those basic movement patterns can be done seated um, and I'm happy to um, demonstrate those if anyone wants. So you can just, you know, via chat or let me know if you'd like to see how to do some of these things seated and I'd be happy to, um, to show you that. A lot of us, um, are seated during the day. Actually, I'm going to show one, one thing seated. It's body upright because it's so important. So when you're sitting in a chair, <laughs> okay, sit on the front of the chair, not, not like this, <laughs> sit on the front of the chair and you want your shoulders above your hips, just like when we're standing, not arching the back, just, you know, you have to find that spot where the lower back is kind of open. So you get a flat thing here. The spine is straight without being rigid, okay? Now, so what that means is then, just like when in the exercise, the knees are lined up with the hips, and I don't know how well you can see, but my ankles are under my knees. Now, when you sit on the very front of a chair, like as far forward as you can without feeling like you're gonna slip off, you have weight in your feet. So if you try to pick up one foot and pick and then pick up the other foot, you'll feel you have to brace a little bit. So um, so these things can be done, you know, relaxing. So you wouldn't want to, you know, separate the weight like that. I just um, demonstrate for this so that you have the idea. And if anyone wants more information, like I said, I'm happy to do that. Um, but okay, let's get started on the form. So there are three foot positions in the form. So far, we just worked on two. We worked on in the basic stance, the Wu Chi position like this, and then we did the 70-30. Now in the form, we start out with the feet in a V, it's called point, 
and I'm going to guide you through this. What we do is we um, will shift into the right foot. We'll step out with the left to get the hip width distance. Then we shift and when we turn, we arrive at that basic stance. Okay, so this foot position is called the basic stance. It's called the horse stance. It's called the Wuchi posture. So again, I just want to be sure you can see my feet. So from point, so in point, our feet are in a V, small V, okay? The heels don't touch. Just take a moment here, really maybe 10 or 15 seconds to settle, to allow your attention to be more internal, to be aware of your breathing and the movement of your lungs. So let your feet feel heavy, the knees feel heavy, the tailbone feels heavy. The head is light, your eyes are light, and your hands are light. And we begin by bending the knees and hips, keeping the body upright, bend both hips, all the weights in the right foot, so you're going to step out with the left foot, get your hip width distance, the toes point straight ahead. As you shift into the left foot, your hips line up with the right foot. So you can use your waist turn to the front to straighten the right foot. You shift to the middle, and as you rise, the arms change into this Wuchi position. So the knees are not locked. Elbows are bent slightly. I'll get a little closer to the screen. So you can see my hands are not in front of the body. They're aside, but on a plane that's in front. So um, the arms went from this, just opened a little bit, the fingers straightened, and the elbows bend without raising the shoulders. Some people will raise the shoulders to bend the elbows. You don't need to do that, okay? So this is the Luchi position, okay? So the first movement is called preparations, the arms only. And while the wrists change position, there should be no tension in the wrists. So we breathe in, the elbows feel heavy, and the wrists rise like they're floating to the surface of water. And the fingers point down. So this is what it looks like. I'll turn sideways so you can see. And then the second time they change, the elbows feel heavy, and that brings the um, palms to the surface of the water. Don't lower the hands. They should still be roughly lined up with the shoulders. Now the elbows bend, feel heavy, and that brings the wrists towards the shoulders. And the wrists relax like a puppy bedding. Okay, then the elbows sink, the wrists sink, fingers float up just a little bit like you're moving through water, and then back to Uchi. We're going to do this a couple times, the wrists changing five times. So one, the wrists rise, the wrists are shoulder high and shoulder width, fingers point down. Two, the palms face the floor. Three, the wrists slide towards the shoulders, relax. Four, the elbows sink, the wrists sink, the fingers float up. Five, we're back to Uchi. Okay, so let's do that again from point, feet in a small B. I do a lot of repetition. Take a few moments to relax and settle, relax the belly. Head is floating up, suspended by the crown, feet rooted to the earth. Bending the knees and hips all the way into the right foot, step out with the left foot, toes are straight, shift into the right, excuse me, into the left, let your hips line up with the right, turn the waist, shift to the middle, into the Wuchi position. Check your feet. If you didn't step quite right, go ahead and adjust them. You know, you want those toes pointed straight ahead. And one, the wrists rise. Two, the palms face the floor. Three, the wrists slide towards the shoulders, relax. Four, the elbows sink. The wrists sink. And the fifth time the wrists change, we're back to the Wuchi position. Okay, now from here, we go into ward off left side. That's the name of the posture. The transition is how we get there. And now we're going into that 70-30 posture that we did in the last um, basic movement pattern. So we bend the knees and hips, shift into the left foot. Turn to the right, turn the right toes out a little bit and um, hold the ball. So the left, the right hand's on top. When you turn to the right, the uh, left hand's on the bottom. And the top hand is across from the center of the sternum. The bottom hand is below the navel. And the palms are roughly aligned. Now bend both knees and hips. Shift all the way into that right foot because we're going to step out with the left. Keep your hips lined up with the right foot. Go ahead and take that step. Not a long step, but you maintain the width distance. 
Don't let the knee collapse in when you take the step. Try to keep the knee straight. Now you've got to bend both knees and hips, sinking most of the way into the front leg. Keep the weight in the front leg. Turn to the front, and we change the hands. The bottom hand comes up along the center line, turns and faces the sternum. Top hand goes down and goes back to that Wuchi position. So this is called ward off left side. The uh, um, left arm is the ward off arm protecting the body. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see there's space between the palm and my body. And the palm protects the heart and lungs, okay? So let's put that together again from point. And take a few moments here to relax. Oh, there's a, there's a, maybe a question. Let me just check the chat. Okay, we're fine there. So um, just stay in um, Wuji position and point. Could we have a good 15 minutes? It's plenty of time. I'm used to an hour long class, so I ha that's why I have to keep checking. <laughs> okay, so from point, again, just take the time to relax the breath. Relax the mind and relax the body. Head is floating up, feet firmly rooted to the earth. Allow your knees, tailbone, elbows to feel heavy, head, eyes, and fingertips to feel light. And begin bending the knees and hips, sink all of the weight into the right foot. Step out with the left foot, the toes point straight ahead, get your hip width distance, shift down into the left foot, and let your hips line up with the right foot. Turn to the front, pivoting on the right heel, the center of the right heel, shift to the middle, and as you rise, the arms move a little bit away from the body, the fingers straighten, and the elbows bend slightly. Check your feet, adjust them if you need to, and again, this is the proper position for the arm in the Wuchi position, okay? And then from here, preparation. Elbows feel heavy as the wrists rise to the surface of the water. The wrists are shoulder high and shoulder width. Two, the palms face the floor, palms floating on the water. Three, the wrists slide towards the shoulders. The elbows feel heavy and the wrists relax like a puppy begging. Elbows sink, wrists sink, fingers float up, and we're back to Muchi position. Ward off left side. Bend the knees and hips, shift into the left foot. Turn to the right, turn the right toes out just a little bit, form the ball, right hands on top, shift the weight down into the right foot, step straight with the left foot. Go ahead and look, you want the toes pointed straight ahead. And as you shift the weight, you want the knee of the left leg to be tracking over the toes. So shift most of the weight into the left leg, Turn the waist, keep the weight on the left leg, change the hands. Bottom hand comes up, top hand goes down, they travel on the center line. This is ward off left side. Now, we're gonna bend the knees and hips, shifting down into the right foot, and as we do that, the right hand's gonna come up. Okay, so the weight's on the right leg. Now we're just gonna shift back into our 70-30, and as you shift into the front leg, the right hand comes to the inside of the left. Okay, so the feet are in that 70-30 posture. The hands look like this. It's called press, so the elbows are down. We don't want to be up here because too much tension, okay? And the hands, again, protecting the heart and lungs. Very little pressure between the hands. It looks like this. So we were here. Just stay in press. We were here. We shifted. My hand stayed out there, right? And then when I, and my waist brings the hand forward. Perfect. So the left palm is facing the body. Keep the hands keep contact. The left hand turns down and up, and the hands separate. So the fingertips are roughly shoulder high and shoulder width. Now, as you shift into the rear foot, the elbows bend, but the fingers stay high. Don't lower the hands. So you drop into that rear foot. The right hand joint bends too. And then you shift into the 70-30. Shift back into the left foot, into the front foot and into push. I'm gonna turn sideways, you can see. So when I came back, I dropped into my rear foot, bending the front hip joint, and hands come towards the shoulders, and then I release the push. My shifting the weight opens up. So you have, you're not overextended here, okay? Elbows heavy, um, top knuckle roughly lined up with the shoulders, so push looks like this. 
Okay, shift into the rear foot. Take a short break, walk around a little bit, get a sip of water if you like, and we'll just repeat that section. Okay, again, let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Um, so while you're resting, maybe you, hopefully you can still hear me. I'm just gonna say a couple of things um, about the feet <laughs> and other parts of the body. So, um, so let's say this is your foot. <laughs> um, and, and this just gets, I put this a lot of new information for the first class and I'll summarize just two things that I want you to uh, work on. It's nice that, the, that they, you have access to um, the whole video, but um, okay, here we go. I have a question. I love questions. Okay. So um, this has to do with um, right and left. So when I'm facing the camera, I'm doing my best to do the mirror image. So, um, so I'll, that's why I say shift into the right foot, but I'm on my left foot, okay? When I turn around and I try to do both, you know, facing you so that you can see my hands, that's the, that's the um, you know, problem with Zoom, or I've been in classrooms that don't have mirrors, so it's the same thing. So I do it facing, and I do my best to do the mirror image, and I'm getting better at that. And then when I turn around, so, my, so verbally I'll be saying the same thing. So I'm gonna say shift into the right foot, even though I'm shifting into the left, so that when we're facing the same direction, and I say, um, shift into the right foot, you know, it's going to be the same verbal instructions. Um, so I know for some people, the mirror image is confusing. Um, so I try to do both. But initially, um, I spend a lot of time facing really so you can see what the arms are doing. But remember, that's what's happening with the feet that are most important. So the notion of the, of the foot, so you have three points in the bottom of the foot. The idea of the weight evenly distributed over the foot, I think is hard to grasp and, and difficult to feel if you're not used to thinking about it. So the center of the heel, let's say this is the point that's the center of the heel. Forget my thumb for a minute. Let's say this is the um, behind the big toe and this is behind the little toe. So if those three points maintain contact with the floor, then the weight's gonna be evenly distributed. If they don't have equal pressure, like if you pronate, I have a tendency to pronate, so I have to be really careful about that you don't have as much pressure here, okay? Mm -hmm. So that idea, you're not gonna grasp all these ideas today, but this is what we're gonna be working on constantly, regularly, okay? Um, All right, um, so just to reiterate, that last basic movement pattern from part one, right? We got into the 70-30 and we were just shifting the weight. Well, that's basically what we're doing in the first part of the form, right? Once we finish Wu Chi, we, um, you know, we're just shifting the weight. The arms do different things. We're just shifting the weight, keeping the body upright, okay? So let's say you were in a chair um, as I said, if you can sit in the very front of a chair, you can get, you can get um, the feet into a 70-30. You know, they're closer to you. And then in order to shift the weight when you're in a chair, body upright, shoulders above the hips. So if you just hinge a little bit at the hips, you'll find you get more weight in the front foot. And when you come up, you're here. Okay, so you can do, whoops, sorry, I had a question about um, things being when you're seated. So that's why I'm spending a moment on this. So Wu Chi, right? While you're seated, you can swivel, especially if you've got a hard, the perfect chair is like a hard wood, you know, something can swivel. So you can swivel a little bit on the chair and turn and shift. 
You want to stay relaxed, keep the body upright, waist is the commander. We also, there's also a way to change sides. So we're just going to repeat this section again, and I'll do it um, at least once with my back to you. So I think we'll do it twice. Uh, we'll do it once more facing, and then I think I'll turn around um, to see if that helps some people because people learn differently. Some people are totally visual. Other people are very uh, much auditory learners. So, um, you know, I try to cover it all if I can. So from point, um, here's another thing I wanted to show you. This might help. I have a number of visual aids that I've gathered or made over the years. So this I put together to help the, with the idea of the body upright. So you don't wanna be body upright in a military fashion, you know, with this tension. So that's why if you have this notion that the head is suspended, that the spine is suspended from the top of the head, you can imagine that each of these are the vertebra and this is the tailbone that has a little bit of weight. So you can see the spine floats. As I move, it's not rigid. It can stay upright pretty much, right? I'm just doing the leg portion of the first circle. So you can be upright and be relaxed. The other thing is the idea of shifting the weight. If it helps internally with the image of a slinky, dropping into the center of one foot, dropping into the center of the other. Okay? All right. The five minutes. <laughs> so just take a few moments here to settle and relax. Relax the breath, the mind, and the body. And begin bending the knees and hips, sinking all the way into the right foot. Step out with the left foot, the toes point straight ahead. Shift into the left, allow your hips to rotate and line up with the right foot. Turn to the front, pivoting on the center of the heel. Shift to the middle, into the Wuchi position. And breathing in as the wrists rise, and then just breathe naturally. Two, the palms face the floor. Three, the wrists slide towards the shoulders, relax. Four, the wrists sink, fingers float up. Five, we're back to Wuchi, okay? Ward off left side, bend the knees and hips, shift into the left foot, turn to the right, turn the right toes out, hold the ball, right hands on top, left hands on the bottom, all the way into the right foot, step straight out with the left foot, bend the knees and hips, shift into the left leg, turn the waist, change the hands. Okay, so the right hand is in the Wu Chi position, the left palm is across from the chest. As you sink into the rear foot, the right hand comes up. As you sink into the front foot, the left foot, the right hand comes to the inside of the left. Left hand turns down and up, the hands separate, shift the weight, and shift the weight. Okay, now I'm gonna turn around, we'll do it again, and I'm gonna add one little thing. So front point. Again, body's upright, head floats off to the heavens, feet rooted to the earth. And begin. Bending the knees and hips, shift into the right foot. Step out with the left foot, hip width distance, toes point straight ahead. As you shift into the left, let your hips rotate and line up with the right foot. Turn to the front, pivoting on the center of the right heel, shift to the middle. And as you rise, the arms are in the Wuchi position. Check your feet and adjust them if you need to. Preparation, elbows heavy as the wrists rise to the surface of the water, wrists are shoulder high, shoulder width. Two, the palms face the floor. Three, the wrists slide towards the shoulders, relax. Elbows, wrists heavy, fingers float up. We're back to Uchi. Ward off left side. Bend the knees and hips, shift into the left. Turn into the right, turn the right toes out, hold the ball, right hands on top, all the way into the right foot, step straight out with the left foot, bend the knees and hips, get most of your weight into the left foot, relax the right hip joint, turn the waist, change the hands. The left hand comes up, left palm facing the chest, right hand into Wu Chi. As we shift into the right foot, the right hand comes up. As we shift into the left, the right hand comes to the inside of the left, Left hand turns down and up, the hands separate, 
Shift the weight into the rear foot and release the push. Okay, stay there. I'm gonna take two steps back and I'm just gonna show you the next part, which is the mirror image. Follow along if you can. Shift down into the right foot and the hands come towards the shoulders. Turn to the left, turn the left toes out. Now we're gonna hold the ball with the left hand on top. Don't lean back, bend that front hip joint. All the way into the left foot. Step with the right foot. Okay, now we're gonna go into board off right side. Bend the knees and hips, shift into the right foot. Turn to the front, change the hands. The right hand comes up, facing the stern on the left hand into Uchi. Bend the knees and hips, left hand comes up. Shift into the right foot, left hand comes into press. Right hand turns down and up, the hands separate. Shift the weight and shift the weight, releasing the push. Now all the weight into the right foot. Step up with the left foot like the Wuchi position. Shift to the middle. And as you rise, we go back to Wuchi. That's why it's called first circle. Okay, let's just stay in Wuchi for a moment. Relax here. Take a breath. Okay, so we should stop here. Um, I want to give you just two little um, things to work on. I mean, you're welcome to watch the video and do whatever you want to do. But here's what I recommend for new beginners. Focus on just two of the basic movement patterns. This is uh, a bookcase talk. So I'm going to recommend that you practice really just two of these. So with your fingertips resting, um, I actually do this a lot with on my kitchen counter or bathroom sink or bathroom counter because you've got the mirror in front of you in the bathroom. Fingertips just gently touch, right? So this is my arm position. And when the fingertips touch a surface, it just helps you relax. You don't have to worry about balance. And just do with the feet hip width distance, just that bending the knees and hips, okay? Do that maybe six times. And maybe you wanna have one hand on the lower back to make sure that you're relaxed there. You know, so one hand is out and maybe you'll do it like this because you wanna make sure that you're not tightening. So if you lean, it's because you're going too far. Like I say, none of these are range of motion. They're all coordination. And then just practice shifting the weight. Paying attention to the bottoms of the feet, same sinking into the center of the earth through one foot, sinking into the center of the earth through the other. And as I shift my weight, look what happens to my hands, right? They move. Now, we don't wanna sway. This is the important part. We go, I'll go over this a lot every week. So we don't wanna be swaying left and right. That's why I introduced the idea of down. Cause you wanna keep your center of gravity low. That really helps with balance and the knees pointing straight ahead. Okay. <music>